Today we're doing a review of the K-Series Bodega Coolers. Hey guys, hello, keep it dirty off-road, and I got sent another fridge for us to try out. In this video, we're gonna first do an unboxing, show you guys what comes in the box. Second, we're going to a quick test to see how long it takes to get up to temperature, and then we're gonna take it on the trail, see how it does in our Raptor. So let's get to it. Now, as I'm going through this, this was sent to me, and the reason why it was interesting is, one, the size, it's a little bit smaller than the other coolers that we've gotten. And sometimes you don't need such a large cooler. You want to have something a little bit smaller, day trips and stuff like that. A big cooler with like a whole fridge, freezer section is very helpful when you're doing a long multi-day run, but sometimes you just need a small cooler just to keep some water cold and stuff like that. Another cool feature is that it's controlled by an app. So we're going to test the app too, see how that does. And finally, I do like this one because of the size. It's smaller, so it's not as heavy to lug around like some of the other ones. It opens like that, goes with the box inside. I see this is our power supply, and it is, standard power supply. <laughs> so yeah, there it is guys. You have your simple to use control panel. There is a little USB port here, I guess, for charging other devices. Interesting. It's a single bay with a tiny little bay off to the side. I guess so you could put smaller pieces there, I'm not sure. Uses a um, weird little string there. And it has a drain, which is kind of cool. Some of these don't have, go ahead and turn it on and see how the panel looks, see how intuitive that is. Let's turn it on. Oh wow, right now it's set for negative four. We don't want it that low. If we want to use it as a fridge, we want to be like in the 30s. So we're going to set it to, we normally set it, which is around 36. Typical fridge is around 36, 37. What settings do you have? Max. So there you can see the control panel. And the only thing this does is it changes it between the max and the eco. Now let's see, it's still in the 80s. I think one thing I have noticed is very quiet. You do have a light. I do like the handle design, but I am a little worried about these because there's no real places to strap this down from, right? Just these two. These may not work all that way. Well, I do like the size of it though. It's got a decent size, but I think, I don't think the water bottle will fit standing up in here. So we're gonna have to try that here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and try the app. There's a little link in the owner's manual, a little QR code, a little photo. So let's see how this is. So we're gonna go ahead and open it. And I'm gonna try to do this blind, right? Without any, um, without any instructions, see if I can go ahead and pair the fridge with this. Sign up, United States, get a verification code. Okay, let's go ahead and add a device. Okay, so after a little bit, it looks like I have the current temps. Now this isn't updating the same. This currently says 72 and this says 76. You do have the ability to protect the battery, the ability to set the temperature, and you could monitor the temperature. Battery protection is an important feature, right? Because you end up connecting this to the truck and you tend to leave it overnight. You want this to stop cooling instead of killing the battery on the truck. And then you can change the temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and I think that's it. And you can rename it. You can name it whatever you want. The app is kind of cool. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's definitely not keeping updated, right? The fridge is reading 70 and this is 76. Yeah, it doesn't update as quick. So that kind of sucks that it doesn't update as quick. I wonder if it'll, how quickly I can see the change. Oh, the changes are instant. Yeah, max, instant. So as you type in commands, the temperature will finally update. All right, so that's it as far as the unboxing. Nice little fridge, decent little size. I think next step is we're gonna start testing it. So first step, I'm gonna let this get back to warm again, let it sit for a full six hours, let it warm up again, and then I'm gonna see how long it takes to go down to zero, which is freezing temperatures, which you do have the capability to use this as a freezer too as well. You just can only pick one, you can't do both, unlike some of the other ones. So let's get to it. Now to test this out, we set up a GoPro with an iPad with a timer so we can see how long it's gonna to take to cool. Now there's two thresholds that we're looking at here. We're looking at regular fridge temperature, which is around 36 degrees Fahrenheit, and then freezer temperature, which is zero degrees. The fridge did pretty good. It initially took a little while to kind of get started, but eventually it got to 36 degrees in about 20 minutes, which is about average. We have our set powers that are a little bit larger and they took about 20 minutes themselves. To get to zero took about 38 minutes, which is not too bad considering the size of the fridge. Now to continue testing, we also went ahead and took this along on one of our off-road runs where we went to the Mojave National Preserve. All right, so we're already at the gas station at Eddie's World. I actually drove up here for about an hour and a half and forgot to plug it in. And look at that. Surprise, surprise. Without opening it, it actually held the temperature pretty good. Get it all lit up for a day in the Mojave. One thing that does suck is you can't do these vertical. It doesn't fit a standard water bottle. See that? 
Coke cans and all that stuff will be fine. Shorty water bottles will be fine, but regular water bottles. Yeah. Now it says it has this little tray section for ice cubes, but I find that this part doesn't stay as cold as the rest. So I'm using it to hold the pack cables. I think it's a nice little storage area. Let's see how this holds up. I'm a little worried about the handles. Oh, no, but we'll see. Now we did run a full day of trails with this thing on some heavy rough trails. Average temperature was about 80 degrees, 80, 85 degrees throughout the day. So it wasn't too hot. And overall it did really well. Uh, I was initially worried about insulation, right? Cause this, this feels like it's mostly air type insulation, but no, on the way up, I forgot to plug it in when I loaded it onto the truck. I set it to 30 degrees. I set it a little bit cooler than normal. Cause I want to have a little bit of ice in my water bottles and it held the temperature the whole hour and a half almost two hour drive up to eddie's world without any problems and then when i hooked it up it held temperature all day it did really good on the trails i did set it a little bit lower typically fridge temperatures around 36 degrees i set it down to 30. i got a little bit of ice in my drinks which is really great for water it makes it last longer in the cup holder but also i had a little sunny d i'm a diabetic so i had to carry something sweet sometimes in case my medication gets my blood sugar a little too low it was like having a little sunny d slushy it was nice it was perfect overall i'm really happy with it it has held up Great. Uh, I was a little worried about these handles. They did hold up after some crazy trails. We hit the Mojave after Hurricane Hillary. There was a few areas that were pretty messed up from washed out sections and all that stuff. A lot of it, we surprised we hit at speed and this thing didn't bat an eye. I, I actually didn't even hear it the whole trip. It was extremely quiet. I will say though that the materials do feel cheap. We've had a couple other fridges that were plastic and they felt a little bit nicer, thicker, stronger, right? So this does feel a little bit cheap, but it kind of goes with the price point. You can get these on Amazon for about $189 and I think they are available also with Prime too. So it's not bad considering what you get. You do get both a mobile charger and a home charger so you can pre-cool it. And overall, you know, it's worked really great for us. I think the only drawback is this little shelf right here. It has this little shelf right here and according to the manuals and all that stuff, this is supposed to be for like a little ice tray and all that stuff. I found that the little shelf didn't stay as cool as the rest of the fridge. At least it didn't feel as cool. What I find is that it's a perfect spot to hold the power cable, right? Most of these fridges don't have a way to really hold power cables and all that stuff. So I found that, that it was really good to put my power cables there and store them. Lastly, it kept temps. I think this thing is by far the most stable temperature we've seen out of any system. It kept temp stable. It didn't have to go extra, uh, you know, to keep the temps and then go up a little bit over before it started again. It kept really good temps the whole time. It has a feature on here where it has a battery. Now you may think that this thing has an onboard battery, but it actually doesn't. That's right. There is monitoring the battery power source that it's connected to. And if it hits down a certain threshold that you can set in the app, the battery threshold that you want it to look at, it'll actually turn off so that it doesn't drain your battery on your vehicle. So it's a cool little feature. We've seen this on a few fridges. If your portable fridge does not have that feature, don't use it. It will just keep running and it'll destroy your battery if you take these type of fridges camping. All right guys, so that's it. Super quiet. It's just small enough for like day trips and stuff like that and I dig it. Obviously it is Chinese made. <laughs> I wish they would have got an American translator for these decals because they, they are obviously Chinese made. The, the owner's made is a little bit better. That's really my only gripe, right? The decals are pretty shitty. They're, they're not good American, but it'll work. We're going to add this to our kit and we're going to use it here the next off-road season. And here, just like we'll do with the set powers here in an upcoming video in a few months, we'll give you guys a long-term review, show you how well it did. If you guys want to get one, we're going to put our Amazon link down below so you guys can get it from Amazon. And yeah, questions, comments below, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.